Welcome to supper time, y'all. Tonight, we're making fried pork chops and a collard greens casserole. I've never made a collard greens casserole before. Lots of collard greens have been made in my lifetime, but never a collard greens casserole. So it's pretty much combining what I already do on my plate though when I eat collard greens with cornbread. Normally pinto beans, wish I would've thought of that earlier, would've put some in the Instant Pot or the slow cooker. Most of the time, those are all beside each other on the plate and they wind up on the fork at the same time together. Or either I scoop them up with the little onion scoops that we cut out, you know, Know, just scoop it all up. So it's kind of like that. We're just putting it all in a pan together. Sounds gross, but I promise it is wonderful. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's gonna be. Like I said, I've never had the casserole before, but that business on my plate is wonderful. I never should have purchased these Dove milk chocolate pumpkin things. I mean, they're not pumpkins. They're just squares, but they have a little pumpkin on the wrapper. Can't stop eating them. I don't even love chocolate. Eight cups, oh, have mercy. We're gonna need a bigger pot. We're gonna boil eight cups of collard greens. Does this make a nine by 13? Oh no, we actually make it in an iron skillet. Okay. <sighs> Hello? Now they keep it in a dust mask. Um, I did keep one for y'all. Let me see where I put it. I had to go find him a dust mask real quick. Now, we're gonna start the collards. I just have a pot full of them right here. I'm not quite sure that's eight cups. I think I need to overflow a little bit. I'm just putting a little salt in here and we're just gonna boil those down. I'm just gonna let them boil while the cornbread finishes cooking and when it cools down, they'll be fine, they'll be done. So yeah, we're gonna have the pork chops, collard green casserole and mashed potatoes. I need to go in here and get some butter real quick. Okay, I didn't have any fresh onions. We must've used the last one the other day and I didn't realize it, but I have frozen onion in the freezer still from the um, onion things that Titus made a long time ago. So we'll just use this frozen onion. Do we need garlic? Yes, we need garlic. Okay, so we're just gonna, we already have the onion chopped, so we don't have to do anything with that. I'm gonna mince this garlic. We need Parmesan cheese and all-purpose flour, and that's all we're gonna need for the casserole. Once I get the casserole done, it's gonna bake for 25 minutes at 350, so while it's in the oven, we'll make the pork chops and the mashed potatoes. So we took a couple of our fall break days. Uh, it was supposed to be this week right here, but we were planning on going to the Smokies. We still didn't get to do that yet. So we only took a couple of our fall break days. We're saving the rest of them for a trip to the Smokies, hopefully not too long from now, so we can see the leaves change before they all fall off, which I mean, I know we still have several weeks for that, but yeah. We definitely wanna see some leaf action up there. I need to leave this flower over here because we're gonna need it for the pork chops. Huh? Like a wild bull? Yeah. Oh no. They make this sound. Yeah, they, they do. Charge. Oh no, I'm scared. Don't get me wild bull. They only eat wise. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay y'all, cornbread and collard greens are done. So we're gonna go ahead and start the casserole now. I've got three tablespoons of butter in here. We're just gonna let this melt. Then we're gonna put in the onions. Let those cook for about three minutes. Then we'll add the garlic. You can also add mushrooms here if you want to, but we're gonna leave the mushrooms out. We've got the onions and garlic coated in the flour. Now we're gonna slowly start whisking in the milk. All right, we're gonna put in a quarter cup to a half cup of grated Parmesan. I'm gonna go with more of a half a cup there. And a little bit of salt. We'll mix this in and then start adding in the collard greens. Okay, we'll get these mixed in. Then we're gonna mix the butter and the cornbread and just sprinkle it all over the top and it's going in the oven for just about 20 minutes. So this recipe is from a Taste of the South magazine. Mm. 
This right here is good enough to eat, y'all. Just this crumbled up cornbread with some butter. Okay, fried pork chops, y'all know the drill. We've got some eggs, just a couple of eggs and a little bit of milk right here. Right here we just have flour and I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper in it. I've got some oil heating up over here in the pan. Good job. Hey, Miss Turkey. We had a busted wheel seal, so we changed both the wheel seals. That was a granddaddy long leg. It was right here since 1993. Overall, this old truck's in pretty good shape. The rails and everything's in real good shape. We blacked all these out right here. We come in here and knocked off any rust that we seen, but there wasn't hardly any rust. I mean, it was just a lot of dirt. A lot of dirt built up. And just like that, it's the next day, y'all. We're about to start cooking supper. So last night's collard green casserole, it was really good. Now me, I would rather just have regular collard greens. Who we got? If you like creamed spinach, I think you would love the collard greens casserole. It reminded me of creamed spinach with cornbread crumbled on top, only collard greens instead really, of spinach. Really good. So yeah, it was good. We were kind of half and half on if we would rather have that or regular collard greens. I would pick regular collard greens. Tonight we're trying another new one from, this one is from a Southern Living magazine. It's called Greek Baked Ziti. There it is. We're about to find out if it's as good as it looks because it looks pretty good. It says it's inspired by a classic Greek comfort dish. Preheat oven to 350. Jonah and Sissy have been painting this afternoon. We have lots of trees and is this a squirrel? Yeah. So this is a 16 ounce package. We only need 12 ounces. We're putting a little bit of olive oil in this skillet and we're gonna put some onion. Once again, I'm using my frozen onion because I'm out of fresh and we have this in there. So we're gonna use it up. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in while this is heating up so they can be thawing out a little bit. And I think we need to mince some garlic. Yep, two cloves. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt back here in the ziti water. Okay, so we got our garlic ready. Manly's up there singing some kind of song. <laughs> Loud, oh, he's getting louder. Oh, I was out there helping him a little bit with the raptor line, and so that's what's on my hands. They are clean. I have scrubbed them very hard, but it's just not coming off. It's gonna have to wear off. That's just the way that goes. All I was doing was putting the lids on for him, like whenever 
he would switch to another bottle, I would put the lids on and shake it down, you know, because like this much is left at the bottom of the bottles. And so I would shake it down and then pour it all into one bottle so he could have more, you know, to use. And if I had realized how hard this stuff was to get off, I would have put on gloves, but I thought it was just gonna be like, you know, normal paint and I would be able to get it off. That is not the case. Let's see, we need two 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce. So that's what I ordered from Walmart. They didn't have them, so they substituted and gave me these little cans. So we'll use all four of those. Some lemon juice and dried oregano. Oh, ground cinnamon. And we need a little bit of sugar. I'm just gonna get my little sugar thing off the table because we just need a teaspoon. The cinnamon and sugar is kind of throwing me off a little bit here, y'all. <laughs> Getting a little nervous about that. Uh, salt, butter, all-purpose flour, milk, Parmesan cheese and pepper. Garlic going in. And now we're putting in the ground beef. And we're just gonna cook this until the ground beef is done. Then we'll drain it. It was supposed to rain this afternoon, but it never did. So we went out there and watered my little cucumber plant and the bush beans again. I forget to go and water those because, you know, back in the spring and summer, we were getting rain like every day or at least many times a week. Some weeks for real, it seemed like every day. But now with this fall garden, we are not getting much rain. Not complaining, kind of happy about it, but I forget to water my plants out there because I didn't really have to during the spring and summer very much at all. Let me turn this up just a little bit. And I need to go ahead and get out a nine by 13 casserole dish. I saw the Malin Yayan 10 weeks ago. You did? Yeah. What color was it? Um, blue. Blue? Uh-huh. Blue is, is my favorite color. Right, yeah, so a blue one. A blue Malin Yayan. Yeah. Are you cleaning your face? Yeah, because I had the dirty stuff on me. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mama, is that cheese or butter? It's cheese. Would you like a piece? Okay, here, you can have a piece of this one. It's mozzarella cheese, so he didn't know if it was cheese or butter. There you go. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, we got the ground beef green. Now we're putting in the tomato sauce. Take me just a second, because I have these four little kids. Okay, we're putting in a tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this ZD off back here because it's almost done. We're just gonna eyeball this. I'm almost afraid to do this, y'all. I don't know why. Okay, tablespoon of lemon juice. Here we go. All right, one and a half teaspoons of dried oregano. One and a half. A teaspoon of sugar. And half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I've got it turned down to simmer. Here's the cinnamon. Okay, we'll mix this all together. All right, we're gonna bring this to a simmer and let it cook for two minutes. While we're waiting on that, I'm gonna go ahead and drain the ziti and spray my nine by 13 casserole dish here. And we're gonna pour the cooked ziti right in here to the bottom of the casserole dish. We're gonna pour this right in. Oh, you know what? I was supposed to mix the cheese sauce with this. That's okay. We'll just leave this in here, and when we make the cheese sauce, we'll mix it right in here in the casserole dish. It's fine. It was just a happy accident. <laughs> okay, so we've got three tablespoons of butter in the pot here. And once this melts, we're gonna whisk in three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. One, two, three. All right, we'll whisk that in. Now we're gonna slowly stir in three cups of milk. And I had this on medium. I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll just dump the ziti in here to stir it all together and then pour it back into the nine by 13. <laughs> and this is gonna take about five to seven minutes for this to get nice and thick. And then we're gonna stir in one cup of Parmesan cheese, a little bit of black pepper, and a little bit of salt. And then it's ready to mix with the ziti. Oh, I need to put my breadsticks on a pan too. I'm just making some of the great value garlic breadsticks to go with this. All right, we're putting in a cup of Parmesan. I'm just gonna eyeball that. All right, we're gonna transfer the ziti over here now just so we can mix it all 
together a little easier than trying to do it in the casserole dish. Oh yeah, that's, that's fine. See, that was just a happy accident. Everything's fine. Oh, this is smelling really good, y'all. Really good. Look at that goodness. That's wonderful. We're gonna pour this into the casserole dish. Now we're gonna put the meat mixture right on top of this. Now we top it with the mozzarella cheese and a third of a cup of breadcrumbs. And that's it, it's going in the oven at 350 for 20 to 25 minutes. That, my friends, is great. It's not like a normal like pasta bake. You do get that little, I mean, even uh, that small amount of cinnamon we put in there, you get like a little, I mean, it's just like, if you didn't know the cinnamon was in there, you would not taste that cinnamon. But it gives it like, it just makes it different. I don't know, this is good. Really good. Mm-hmm. Okay, y'all, we're coming out here. See how it's going with the truck. They're getting the bed back on. That's looking good. They got all the tape off and well, put the things back on. Totally done yet, but I mean. When you put that bed back on that, I mean, it's just like that. It just came together and it was. Is it kind of like Bob Ross? <laughs> George, Martha. 